For question 7, it is a question on heat transfer. And for heat transfer, you need to be very clear what the question is focusing on from where to where and by what transfer method. So before I uh, begin to answer the question, let's take a look to dissect the question. So for this question, there are actually a few bodies. Uh, of course, we need to identify the heat source which is over here. Then after that, there is this body of air over here. And then further on, you will have this uh, metal can. Uh, and if I want to, I can treat this can as a line or I can treat this can as another body. So for the purpose of this um, uh, analysis, I will treat this can uh, as a can with a thick wall or with a wall. And then finally, uh, I will have this last body over here, which is the wax that we are talking about. So in fact, if I look at this, I will have how many body? One, two, three, and four. So when I approach a heat transfer question, I will always form this hamburger diagram in my mind. So what do I mean? Uh, in this case, uh, I will draw it vertically, uh, but most of the time in my mind is like a hamburger. So what is a hamburger? There's a layer of bread followed by a layer of tomato, layer of lettuce, then layer of meat. So in this case, I will have a layer one, two, and uh, three. Okay, uh, forget about the color. Okay, I, I, I didn't pay attention to the, the color I used. I, I, I'm just trying to use the color to illustrate that they are different layers. So the first layer is, of course, the heater. And then I would have the layer of air. And then I would have uh, the, the, the can, which is copper. I will use the chemical symbol here. And finally, I have wax. So basically, with this hamburger diagram, I can quickly tell that, okay, the heat is going this way. Right, because this guy is the hottest and this guy is the coolest. So after I identified the direction of heat, then the next thing I need to ask myself is, how the heat move from one layer to another layer? So if I look at this, well, uh, the heater to the air. Well, the heater to the air, the only way it can go to air is a very poor conductor, right? And uh, the, the metal, the, the radiator, it is made of solid, so cannot convect, right? So the only way that the heat can go to, to heat up the air is by radiation, right? And of course, once the, the layer of heat next to the heater gains heat, it will rise. And uh, naturally, there will be convection forming within the air. So within the air, right, within the air, there will be convection that will heat up the rest of the air. Correct? Then after that, uh, once the air gets warmer, um, it will transfer the heat to the copper. So even if it, if it is a very poor conductor, it is still transferring heat over there. Correct or not? Because it is in contact. So the Excite, uh, the, the, the warmer air will have uh, air molecule that is colliding onto the copper wall and then the copper wall uh, particle that is on this side well, will get, we'll get more vibration and then it will transfer so the heat to here will be of course by conduction correct or not? then from uh, this layer the, the, this layer of copper to this layer of copper because it is within the copper, right? If it is within the copper. So within the copper, then I would also have conduction. And then finally, the, the copper is touching the wax. Then of course, there will be conduction as well. Uh, for the wax, if it is solid, then it is by conduction. If it is fluid, it is liquid, it has melted, then there will be convection. So by just forming this hamburger diagram, I'm very clear uh, what is the heat transfer method that I need to mention over here. Then the next thing is, 
I will need to look at the question and see what uh, the question wants to focus on. So let's see. He wants me to describe how thermal energy, that means heat, is being transferred from where? Through the walls of the can. So through the walls of the can, that means he wants me to focus on this blue layer of uh, hamburger. So if I look at this, if I zoom into this blue layer, because that is what the question wants, right? He wants me to talk about how heat is transferred through the wall of can. So I will have this wall whereby this layer is warm and then this layer is cooler. So then I want to talk about how the heat go from the outer layer to the inner layer. Then of course there's only one transfer method I need to talk about which is conduction. And I'm having one, two, three, four answer line. So in this case that means they really want me to provide a very uh, detailed description on how heat go from the warmer side to the cooler side. And I know that it is, uh, this wall is made of copper, right? No? So meaning that uh, there are two mechanisms over here. The first mechanism is about molecule that is uh, uh, transferring the vibration from neighbor to neighbor. The other mechanism is called free electron diffusion, meaning that the electron from one end can go directly to the cooler end and collide with another molecule or electron on the other side. So meaning that I need to talk about two processes within the four line, right? So I feel that since conduction, uh, the general case is this case, right? Because this case, the, the transferring of a vibration through neighboring particle uh, by coll 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 collision, it is the main process because it happens in both non-metal and uh, metal. So for this case, I will dedicate most of my effort in describing this. So what are some of the keywords? Well, I, I need to highlight the concept that uh, the vibration begin at the warmer side. Then after that, uh, it, it, it then uh, transfer to neighboring particle and then eventually reaching the cooler side, right? So I, I, need to sh I need to use my phrasing to highlight this concept that I have. Yeah, so I need to identify the area that it started first. So let's begin. Uh. So I will plan because it's I do not know whether you have this, but you, you can practice uh, at home planning. Then you will be ready and you can internalize this preparation in your mind when it is in exam. Because some of you will argue that oh, in exam, I'm already running out of time. You ask me to plan and later it's worse. Then my question is, you don't plan. You give a messy answer. In the end, the time you commit to it, you may get zero. Eh? So this one really different from person to person. But... The truth is, if you plan during the preparation until such a level that the preparation is internalized in your brain, then yeah, you don't need to plan because it is already in your mind. But before you can say this, you must practice planning. You cannot tell me that, oh, I, I don't need to, I can, uh, can perform. Uh, you, if you can perform, you won't be watching this video for this question. Uh. Okay, so for me, let's plan. Okay, how to plan? Okay, step one, I need to identify where it start, right? So where it start? Of course, it is uh, the wall nearer to heater. This is what I want to say. Then I need to talk about the key processes, right? Using keywords. So what are keywords? Uh, I must say that... Uh, well, uh, the molecule near to the hotter, the warmer wall will uh, vibrate faster, correct? I must mention the main process of transfer, collision. And it's not just collision, you know, it is a uh, neighbor only. Uh, cannot, why, why, why the neighboring very important? Well, because if you say transfer, right, from my place, I transfer to the last person in my, in my, in my classroom. Is that conduction? No. Conduction is I transfer to the person sitting next to me. Then he or she transfer to the person sitting next to him or her. Right? So I need the word neighboring. And by using this keyword, the setter, the, the marker will understand that ah okay, this guy knows. Right? 
Then, so this one will be the general process of conduction. Then I also need to uh, put in this word, right? The free electron diffusion, right? Because this is specific to the material that I am having, which is copper, right? So with this, I can see that, okay, I need to spend about maybe one, two, three, then four, four lines. I should be able to squeeze everything in. With this, then you start, you start saying, okay, so I will say something like, okay, first I need to talk about point one, right? Where it start. So I will stay with, uh, okay, the molecule will, uh, will uh, gain energy. Oh, maybe I must say at where first. So the molecule at the wall nearer to heater, right? Will gain energy and vibrate faster. So once I write this statement, I already have where it starts and I have the key point gain energy and vibrate faster. So I have this and I have this. Okay, then I need to talk about uh, collision with neighboring uh, molecule. So I continue, I use different color. So then it says, uh, so I must refer to these molecule, okay, will collide with neighboring molecule, right? So I have done, I have done this and this, okay? But I have not end now, I, I need to complete it. Although this is my checklist, uh, I still need to uh, so-called so do a closure, right? So I need to have closure and transfer the energy to them. This is my closure. So after I do the closure, I realize, hey, I leave only one line. Eh. If I go and talk about the free electron and how it moves, uh, I would have overcome it, you know. So what I do, I, I still need to let the marker know that, hey, I know my stuff. I know this is copper, this is metal, it has free electrons. So what I do, well, I use keyword uh, to save my, to save my uh, time. So I will say that uh, in addition, so finally I use some uh, grammar uh, conjunction, right? In addition, free electron diffusion uh, will also happen. So I fit my answer into four answer line. Correct or not? And this is how I know, oh, okay, when I should overcommit. Then some of you may ask, okay, teacher, in this case, uh, four answer line, you answer like that is enough. But what if uh, the question is now asking me, describe what is free electron diffusion? Then you have not teach me, like, then how? Okay, don't worry. Now I teach you. So if, let's say I need to expand and give you a more detailed description of free electron diffusion, how should I approach this? Well, number one, go back to the planning board. Correct or not? Free electron diffusion. I need to highlight the difference that free electron diffusion have with your general conduction, right? General conduction happens what? Neighbor to neighbor, one pass to the one next to it. So I need to highlight this particular difference, okay? I don't want to give like a very general description. That does not show my understanding at all. I want to pinpoint, okay? Laser focus on the key difference. So free electron diffusion, what is the key difference? The key difference is the electron will carry the energy and go directly to the cooler end. So if you want me to draw out the picture, if now I have a, a molecules, what they do is that they will pass the energy like that, one to another, until uh, the molecule at the cooler end uh, receives the energy. Free electron diffusion is different, right? The molecule here vibrate already, right? It knock into the electron, uh, the electron can directly go all the way to the cooler end and knock on this molecule or electron or whatever particle there and transfer the energy directly to the cooler end. So as a result, of course, if you go and do, if you go and do jump, jump, jump like that, of course it's slower than you swoop, like that go direct, right? So I need to use my words, okay, to highlight this difference. So what I say, well, I will say, okay, Oh, free electron diffusion now. Oh, very good. The electron, right? My 
subject is different. All over here, I'm talking about molecule, molecule, molecule. Uh, when I talk about free electron diffusion, I will say electron, that is my subject. My electron will gain energy, right? And what it do? It will travel directly. I travel freely. Maybe I use the word freely. Uh, travel freely, not only to the labor, freely to the cooler end, right? This place that I'm talking about, this place, okay, is my cooler end, right? So you need to know your terms. If you do not know that it's called the cooler end, what are you going to say? Travel to the right-hand side. Uh? Cannot, ma. right? Travel to the cooler end. And then what happened? Transfer the energy to the molecule. There. Ah. So down here, I will point out the key difference, right? The electron at the warmer end, right, will gain energy and transfer uh, or move. I use move lah. Uh, move uh, freely to the cooler end and transfer the energy to the molecules there wire collision so it is one long sentence which i don't like lah, but if on the spot you ask me to describe it this is how we describe it. so after i write maybe i will change some of the thing like and the electron at the warmer end gains energy maybe i will full stop here lah. i will full stop here okay gain energy right then they refer to those electron move really to the cooler end and transfer energy to the molecule yeah i separate i will break it into two sentences then yeah so this is how i will approach a heat transfer question so to recap when you're given a scenario simplify it to a hamburger diagram break it down to different bodies right focus on how heat is being transferred from one medium a uh, one body to another body sometimes Within the body, like air, okay, you can talk about how the whole body gets the heat. Like how I do it in the copper layer, right? From one end of the layer to an other end, right? From this end of the layer, go to this end. Yeah. Then after that, you go and talk about your knowledge of the different mechanism of heat transfer. Okay, let's move on to part B, uh, a bit messy. So I'm going to delete some of this. So this part B, uh, I'm actually quite surprised that many of you find it very challenging. Like. Oh. It says, uh, why thermal energy cannot be transmitted to the can effectively by convection? So I'm talking about heat transfer transmit to the can. So I refer to my hamburger diagram. The can is over here. This entire thing is the can. Right? And I want to talk about the heat transfer to the can. So the heat must come from the heater, lah. correct or not? And of course, they are talking about convection. So a lot of you give me the answer is, oh, convection cannot form. Huh? Convection cannot form? Eh? You tell me how, why, why is it convection cannot form? The air around here get heated up, it will rise. As it rise, it will cool and then it will sink back. What? No? Got convection current, see? Hot air rise, then it cools, it sinks. No, got convection current now. Why you say why how can you answer and say that there's no convection? There is convection current. But the question is asking you, or the question is implying, does this convection current bring hot air? I didn't say heat, huh? Does this convection current bring hot air to the can? No what? The convection current bring hot air up. And then after that it cools down. The cool air will sink. And it will come into contact with the can. You see? So technically speaking, the heat from the radiator actually reaches the can by radiation. Right? So in this case, you can simplify it and say that, oh, actually, uh, the heat uh, will just radiate and go to the can. That is the main heat transfer method. Because like I said, air is a very poor conductor. You wait for air to conduct the heat to you, uh, really, I can't, must, must wait some time. Nah, huh? Must wait, 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 wait a long time. So in this case, if you go and answer part B, convection current does not form, uh, it is wrong. 
convection current form. No, you see? Form what? There's nothing stopping it. There's enough air, there's enough gap, so it should form. Yeah? But the fact is that it is not responsible for bringing the hot air to the can. So therefore, convection is not the main heat transfer method between the radiator and the can. So in your answer, you must reflect this understanding. And they give you two lines for one mark. So you must talk about this. Correct or not? So you have to say something like, well, the convection current form will, uh, the convection current form uh, will, 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 the convection current form uh, will cause the hot air to rise. Okay, because there's only two lines. You shouldn't be talking about what air expand, density drop, and all those things. Those description is for you to explain how convection current form. They didn't ask you for that. Yeah? So, convection current form, but this will cause the hot air to rise. I will full stop here. Okay? Then, I will carry on. Okay? But, this hot air will not reach the can. Full stop, that's all. Because it's one mark and there's only two lines. Hmm? Okay? Okay, let's move on to your part C. Part C is basically a temperature time graph. And they are asking you now that, okay, they gave you the temperature time graph for can B and they want you to draw the can A. So let's take a look. Can A and can B, what's the difference? Can B or can A is silver in color. Can B is black. Meaning that the heat will go to here and the heat will go to here. But because can A is silver, uh, it will absorb the heat at a very slow rate because most of them will get reflected. So it will absorb the heat slower. But it will still absorb. Can B being black, will absorb the heat faster. So, it is about time. So you can see this flat line over here. What is this flat line? This flat line is the melting point. Well, whether you absorb heat slow or you absorb heat fast, the melting point doesn't change, right? So I know that there must be melting going on over here. Starting temperature over here, can A will absorb the heat at a slower rate, meaning that it will reach maybe the uh, melting point at a slower time. So I come to here. Then after that, I must make sure that it takes a longer time to melt. So then I will take maybe, uh, well, I would say maybe 4 square to melt instead of 2. So down here, I take 2 square to melt, right? So now I take 4 square. Lah. Then after that, from here, it takes one, two, about three square to reach here. So I will take more than that. So one, two, three, four, I take five square la, until the max. So I reach here. So I draw, whoop, then flat. Then after that, I follow the curve. La. I curve up, I curve up, law. you won't curve down, curve down. So this is the answer. Simple, right? So for this, most of you get it. Uh, some of you are changing the melting point, uh, which shows that you are lagging a certain understanding. Uh, but I'm glad that very, very, very few of you uh, actually draw a temperature that is rising more rapidly than uh, can be. So of course, don't